What's up YouTube, it's Mark again and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. Today, I'm gonna go head over to the STAs for an afternoon hunt. I've got my new uh, boat inflatable paddle board and I'm gonna be trying something a little special today. I'm going solo. I don't wanna deal with any of other people right now. I'm actually gonna try to use this paddle board as a layout boat. Um, so I got a little spot picked out. Hopefully nobody else is gonna be in there. And uh, I'm gonna paddle this thing in there and see if we can figure this thing out. It's gonna be uh, an interesting adventure. See you guys out there. A big deer and he didn't go 30 yards oh my god <laughs> that was the first buck i've ever shot Woo, what a rush money that deer is dead tagged out baby <laughs> you shot one yeah hell yeah dude. i saw him go what? down Before I get too far into this video, I just want to make a couple really quick announcements. I promise they'll be quick, but if you want to skip past them, jump uh, jump about 45 seconds ahead. Anyway, um, <clears throat> it's getting into the time of the year now where we start doing a bunch of events. Um, we do those for our Patreon members. We do some events with Backcountry Hunters and Anglers um, and some of our sponsors. So a couple of the events that we got coming up, we would love to see you guys at. Uh, first up, um, Wood Hunting Saddles is hosting a saddle hunter meetup. It's gonna be like a camp out hunt. Um, and there's also gonna be like a scavenger hunt, I guess um, uh, like an Easter egg hunt where we're gonna hide saddles and hunting gear in the woods. And if you find them, you get to keep them. Um, so that should be a lot of fun. It's gonna be February 25th to the 26th. You can buy tickets um, at the um, event page that is on our Facebook page. So if you haven't followed us on Facebook yet, make sure that you do that now. It's just Swamp and Stomp on Facebook. Um, let's see, another event um, at the Florida Outdoor Expo. We're gonna have a booth there. We're gonna have all of our merch there. Um, you know, a lot of people are always asking us, like, what kind of material are those shirts made of? Um, come to the booth, you can touch them, you can look at them. We're gonna have lots of cool interactive games going on um, at the booth as well. So come hang out with us. Um, we'd love to meet all of you and then the last one that I can think of right now um, with Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, um, we're gonna do our third annual uh, deer season kickoff party and scouting workshop. And that's gonna be happening um, in July. And you can find all the dates and information for these events on our Facebook page um, on that event section of the page. Um, but this scouting workshop is really cool. We get a bunch of um, successful Florida hunters to take groups of people out into the woods um, and actually take you scouting. We show you, you know, you know what we're looking for. Um, what do these tracks tell us? Are they fresh? Are they not fresh? Um, how do you tell the difference between hogs and deer, turkeys, whatever? I mean, obviously turkeys and deer don't really look the same, but you get where I'm going with this. Um, and once you do find sign, how do you read it? How do you decide what to do with that? Where do you set up to hunt? All these things you can ask these people. Um, they're here or they are gonna be there to teach you um, about how to hunt in Florida. So it's a really cool event. And we're gonna be roasting up a whole hog afterwards at the kickoff party. So hopefully we'll see you guys there. Again, find all the information on our Facebook page and let's get back into this video. All right guys, so here we are. This is my spot right here. Um, unfortunately, I was trying to get a different spot they ended up doing the drawing early and uh, I pulled up and it was already done even though I showed up on time. So it kind of sucked because I would have liked to have been that way. But we're just going to paddle out, see if we can find some ducks. Um, it's the afternoon, so the nice thing about the afternoon is I kind of scout my way in. Um, the birds really don't start flying until a little bit later anyway, so um, I've got time to, to look around. So I'm just going to scoot around on the paddleboard see what I can find. Maybe it's not all bad because I did just see a nice flock of fulvous whistling ducks come cruising by. So, um, and they're hovering right over the spot that I'm gonna head to. So who knows, maybe I'll get into some ducks after all. All right guys, so I just finished paddling. It really didn't take me that long. I think 
maybe 15, 20 minutes of paddling, and I've found a big open area. You see right here? Here comes a duck right here. See it? See that? Bluing teal. So, I'm liking what I'm seeing here, actually. Um, I mean, as far as ducks, I'm liking what I'm seeing as far as ducks. Um, I was hoping to find a certain kind of vegetation called Kara, um, which the ducks really like. This stuff right here. This is called Nagus guadalupensis, or the southern naiad. It's not as palatable, it's not as nutritious as Kara, but the ducks do like it. Um, instead of just committing, because this spot looks pretty decent, I've already seen a couple flocks of ducks. Instead of just committing to it, I'm just going to float here for a second, just to see what comes cruising through. Here's another duck right here. So, yeah, I think this could work pretty good. I might set up right here off of this little point. Somebody's clearly already set up here before, so um, yeah, I'm gonna hang out. I just want to make sure that I'm where the ducks want to be. Um, if you know, if I see them landing elsewhere, like there's some birds sitting there. Those look like coots, but I think some of those ducks just landed there with them. So I just want to make sure that I'm not gonna commit to a spot that you know the ducks don't want to be at. So um, I'm gonna hang out for a little bit, see what happens, and then get set up. So what I ended up doing here uh, to set up the sort of layout situation is that I used two leafy tarps, um, one on the back that I would lay over and then one over the front that I could pull over me as a blanket. And I put on my leafy suit top. Um, and as you can see, it actually works pretty darn well. I, I've got cattails folded over um, the, the front and the back of the paddleboard. And I was actually you know, really comfortable sitting here, um, you know, dry um, and able to lay down fully. All right, so we'll set up. Oh, if nothing else, it's just pretty comfortable. A little cushion, lay my head down. I can just cover up completely with this blanket. Well guys, it is uh, 4.30 and <clears throat> the birds are not flying. Those coots have been over there chilling the entire time. There's coots everywhere, in fact. Um, but Hopefully some birds will come close enough that I actually want to shoot at. And if not, I'm gonna shoot all those coots over there. Well, unfortunately sometimes in duck hunting, you're just not on the spot. Instead of rushing at the last second to get out of here, you start packing up, start pedaling in and So, um, as you know, I shot a few cute, cutes, I shot a few cutes the other day. Coots, these things, uh, the least wanted bird in America. Um, now, if you've ever gone duck hunting, you've probably heard that they taste like crap. Um, that's not true. People just don't know how to cook. Uh, but a lot of times they're very abundant when the ducks are not flying. And so they can kind of save your hunt. Um, and you know give you something to shoot at and you still get to take some meat home. So um, Today we're gonna cook a couple of them up uh, Well, actually, we're not gonna cook them up today I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to clean them and then tomorrow. I'm gonna cook some up um, But the name of the game here is coot gizzards um, 
Now they do have some other meat on them as well. You could take out their legs, um, which are pretty meaty, um, if you wanna do something with those. Um, they also have breast meat. Um, their breasts are not very big. Uh, if you've ever seen a coot try and fly, they're not very good at it. Uh, they fly pretty slow, so their breasts are you know, not as big as a, a duck. But um, they do have some meat on them, so if you wanna uh, collect all of that meat, you can. But the, the real treasure of, from a coot is the gizzards. And so right here, we've got gizzards. And if you've ever seen the gizzard on a duck, you know that it is not this big. Um, these are humongous. On a coot, gizzards are gigantic. So they're really easy to get out. I'm gonna show you how to get them out. And then I'm gonna show you how to fillet them because there's a few different things that you can do with them. Um, as you can see, this like kind of silverish looking skin on there is basically tendon. This is a really strong muscle. And what a gizzard is done, what it's used for, um, you can actually see on the inside there, there is freshly chewed up food. It's just plant material. They've been eating uh, vegetation. Um, and a gizzard, they take sand and rocks, um, they eat them, and they get stuck in the gizzard. And so what they do is in order to get as much nutrients out of the plant matter as possible, they will um, put the plant matter in there with the rocks and then those muscles contract and crush the plants and turn it into like a paste. Um, and that just breaks down all the cellulose, which is the cell walls of plant material. Um, and those cell walls tend to uh, be very difficult to digest. Um, so if you if you don't chew them and break them apart, then you're not getting a lot of the nutrients out of plants. So this helps um, you know birds get as much as possible out of their meals by breaking it down physically before it gets chemically broken down in their stomach and intestines. So that's what the gizzard is. So it's just a big chunk of muscle. Um, and so obviously we got to get that food out of there. Um, and there's some stuff we can do to, to clean those up. But first, I'm gonna show you how to get the gizzards out of a fresh bird. So I've got three of them here. I'm gonna figure out how to prop up this camera and show you what to do. This is probably the laziest camera setup I've ever done, but it's gonna work. So all you need to do to clean a coot, it's really straightforward. You're just gonna pinch a little bit of skin. They have really kind of weird feathers. They're kind of hairy in a way but pinch past them and, and just get a little bit of skin and then take your knife, and just poke a hole in the skin. And the nice thing about their skin is it's actually pretty thin. So you can just, from there, once you have a hole, you can just tear a hole right into it. Look, and there you go. You've got everything exposed. You can see all the guts in there and the breast meat is up here. So if you wanna get that breast meat, just tear that skin all the way up and you can just take your knife and go right down the sternum and just follow the bone like this just like that and just like that you've got yourself a breast now as you can see it's it's tiny it's like a nugget so it's really it's not really worth it um, but you know you can feed them to your dogs and they will absolutely love them Maddie look she loves it anyway so the way you get the gizzard out the gizzard's going to be right here um, it's sort of right underneath where the rib cage ends and you can feel it with your fingers it's just like a big ball you can see it moving around inside of there um, so just take your knife and just kind of score that uh lining right there that kind of like keeps all the guts together and peel that aside and there's your gizzard look at how big that thing is it takes up like so much of the coots um, guts so anyway you'll notice that the gizzard is attached by what almost looks like an umbilical cord right here that attaches on the bottom side so I'll just flip the gizzard over like this um, and just take the knife and there's kind of like a softer tissue there. And I'll just cut in, like, it, it's like a wedge. You just cut in from both sides um, and meet in the middle, just like that. And then pull it out. And there's 
one coot gizzard. So I'm gonna get the other ones out real quick and then I'm gonna show you how to deal with the gizzards once you've got them out. So there's a few different ways that you can deal with a gizzard. And as you can see, there's like all that tendon material, that whitish skin color. Um, and that stuff, you don't want to eat. It's, it's really, uh, it's going to be really chewy once you cook it. So you don't want that on there. So there's two things you can do. You can either boil them slowly or slow cook them or braise them. And that's going to break down that tendon material. Um, that's one way people do it. But personally, I just like to fillet them out and treat that like skin. So it's like filleting like a little mini fish and I'll show you how to do that. But you cut all that tendon material right off and the meat that's left over is actually quite delicious and has kind of an interesting texture. It's, it's almost crunchy in a way. It's hard to explain, but it's really good. So this is about where I forgot to push record. So instead of showing you with video, I'm gonna show you with this picture that I found online. So this is a coot gizzard that's been cut right down the middle and this little pocket in the middle, that's where you would find the food. So you can just rinse that on out and it'll look like um, that empty gizzard. So then you're gonna take your fillet knife and you're gonna make a cut right along that blue line. You're gonna go down to the back and then you're gonna fillet, in this case, towards you and cut away all of that tendon silver skin I showed you. And then do that on all four of the lobes and you're gonna have four beautiful little pieces of meat all right, there we go, guys. That's eight coots worth of gizzards. Right now, we're gonna go fry them up. And we're gonna do this real simply. All we're gonna do is fry them. Uh, we're gonna batter them and fry them. Um, and you really don't have to get fancy with these things, especially once you fillet them out like I showed you. There's really no like tendony stuff in there that's gonna make them not, or that's gonna make them chewy. So. Um, they're ready to rock and roll. You can cook them at a high temperature. It's not a problem. Um, now, normally, okay, so this is the magic touch right here. This is my favorite thing to fry in. It's called Louisiana fish fry products. Um, you can just buy it at Publix or whatever. Um, and it's got seasoning and, uh, and it's a, a breading. So normally what I'll do is I'll take um, a little bit of milk and I'll dip whatever I'm frying into milk and then into this fish fry stuff but I don't have milk, so today we're gonna get fancy. We're gonna use eggs. If you guys have been paying attention to the price of eggs these days, this is gonna be an expensive meal. We are gonna use one egg, because these things are expensive. So there we are. I don't know if the one egg's gonna be enough, but we're gonna, we're gonna do our damnedest to make it work. And again, you don't really need like much of a layer. You just need something to make that meat a little bit stickier um, so that it's going to hold on to the, uh, the fish fry seasoning. Um, now again, normally uh, you could deep fry these. You can kind of fry them however, which way you want. I'm just going to use uh, some olive oil, um, a generous amount, but I'm not going to be deep frying these. These are going to be pan fried. Um, so there's a healthy amount of olive oil in there. We're going to get that heat it up while we start breading all these things. Um, so we're gonna throw a bit of breading stuff in here. You don't need much, you just need enough to sort of cover the bottom because you're gonna toss them around in there. And uh, I'm just gonna dump all of them into the egg and stir it around. Now they all kind of have like a little bit of a coating of egg on them. And that's gonna help that fish fry stuff stick to them really nicely. So our oil is nice and hot, so I'm gonna start pulling these gizzards out and tossing them in the, if I can get them, there we go. And just tossing them around nice and coated just like that a light dusting is all we need and then into the brine pan
All right, so I flipped them all and they are starting to get that nice golden brown color. So I would say they are probably about ready to come on out. So just like any other time that you're frying something, we're going to get some paper towels. I'm gonna lay those in a bowl, toss them in there so that that can soak up any excess grease. All right, there we have it. We've got some fried coot gizzards. I'm gonna let those cool off for a second, grab my favorite condiment, dip them and eat them. Uh, this is gonna be a great um, little snack to have with your buddies and you're having you know, a couple drinks or whatever or a little appetizer before dinner. Um, and uh, it's a good reason to shoot coots. Uh, you know, sometimes it's all you can get. And uh, if you do shoot them, you know, I'm a big believer in eating what you kill so don't let them go to waste this is a great little snack and i'm probably going to regret this decision right now oh i'm not doing that that is really hot i'm gonna give that a minute and then i forgot to push record again so you guys don't get to see me take the first bite but i promise you i wouldn't have showed you this recipe if it wasn't delicious um so next time you got some coots flying in you don't have any ducks coming in shoot some coots eat the gizzards let me know what you think of them um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, give it a thumbs up and make sure that you are subscribed to Swamp and Stomp. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.